An airliner taking off from Athens International Airport bound for Munich early one summer's morning. Your holiday doesn't just involve a point-to-point -point jump. From a pilot's point of view, Europe's current airspace is an obstacle course, even for ordinary flights. And that's before taking into account the challenges imposed by the increase in commercial traffic, adding to the management complexity of the European airspace, one of the busiest in the world. Before the flight, our cameras took a look at the crew and aircraft preparation. The airline we're flying with is Aegean Airlines, Greece's largest private carrier and the second largest regional airline in Europe. It's determined to prosper in the new climate, taking deliveries of brand new Airbuses, which in a few months will give it Europe's youngest fleet. It's a significant investment to add to last year's 5 million passengers and 27 planes. But how do Europe's airspaces look to the captain? The air route goes from Athens to Munich, and that's a total distance of approximately 1,700 kilometers. The 1,700 kilometers are structured and uh, spread out, majorly for a northwestern uh, track. However, we have to uh, deviate many times uh, due to the airspace structure as it is today, which is. Uh, Fragmented. It's divided through many countries. In our case, we're having to overfly six countries altogether. That means uh, we cannot maintain a straight track from Athens to Munich, which would result in uh, less mileage. A uh, direct, straight navigation line from uh, point A to point B, in our case from Athens to Munich, would result in less mileage, less workload, and uh, far more cost efficient. The European Commission has been working since 2000 to unify the continental airspace. In Brussels, Daniel Kayea, Director for Air Transport, is happy that in four years, part of his task will be complete. In Europe, we've done the single currency, a unified market, but we did not unify the air navigation systems. We have to establish a single European sky to achieve some important benefits, more competitiveness for airlines, less delays for passengers, and also very important environmental advantages. European Commission Vice President and Transport Commissioner Antonio Tajani proposed a very ambitious package of measures to relaunch the single European sky. Ha propuesto un paquete muy ambicioso de medidas para relanzar el cielo único europeo. The single European sky won't exactly be that, but the current patchwork will go, replaced by functional airspace blocks or fabs. By 2012, a fab maps coloured areas could look like these, bigger and more unified, and agreed by each government. Negotiations are ongoing, even if they're difficult due to sovereignty implications. With the FABs, Europe's airspace will be defragmented, and after 2012, the stated goal is to go beyond FABs towards a single airspace. In 2005, a European program was launched to fully integrate the air navigation services. Its name is CESAR, which stands for Single European Sky Air Traffic Management Research. European institutions are not alone in pushing to create a single sky. Airlines want more efficiency to cut costs and better meet environmental demands. The International Air Transport Association says a single sky could save 12 million tonnes of CO2 at a stroke and could mean a double-digit improvement in airlines' fuel efficiency. 
More than welcome news in times of exceptionally high fuel prices. The benefits will also affect capacity issues in the air and on the ground. At the moment, a lot of Europe's major airports are considered capacity constrained, and traffic volumes will increase steadily in the next few years. 25 degrees to the right, we're going to be well clear. This area is, uh, a new airspace structure and management should also encourage the implementation of new technologies on the ground. I think uh, throughout the last years, the last 10 to 15 years, there was a certain improvement uh, felt uh, in the technological aspect of uh, aircraft development and its navigation systems. For example, the Airbus family has uh, provided us with a big amount of easier workload in the cockpit giving us uh, very advanced systems to work with compared to uh, more conventional aircraft types uh, from the past. Air navigation service providers and their supporting systems have reached their technological maximum right now. So I think we have to go beyond that and establish uh, future technologies which are communicating to each other between airplanes and between ground. Our flight, Aegean 802, is now approaching Munich. Southern Germany is under one of the densest airspaces in Europe. As the aircraft descends from cruise altitude, the workload in the cockpit increases. Uh, cabin secured. Thank you. Thank you. 106. Check. More traffic and lower altitudes mean more air to ground communications and sometimes poor weather to deal with. GPS primary accuracy is high. 100 checks completed. Thank you. Have a liberal here. Now, here speed check. 3902, contact tower 12057. When all is set for landing, the autopilot is disengaged and the aircraft disables decades of technology to let the pilot fly it manually, just the way it's always been. Hello, behind chest landing, Airbus, line up 26 left behind. Good morning, behind Airbus, line up and 26 left, Airbus, line up 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 26 left, It's very important, actually, to make a collective effort, a partnership with governments, secondly, a civil military cooperation, and also to involve airlines and airports. The social dimension of the single European sky is very important, and I think that the air traffic controllers will benefit from the new technology. In the next few years, we'll allocate 700 million euros to start the single European sky through the CESA program. We are also counting on the essential cooperation of Eurocontrol, which is the pan-European organization dealing with air navigation. It will allocate 700 million euros of its own. Another similar amount, maybe more than 700 million euros, will come from the industry. Puede incluso superar esos 700 millones de euros que vendrá de la industria. CESA will guarantee that uh, it will provide uh, much more standardization uh, throughout the entire European airspace and uh, thereby increasing the capacity of the upcoming uh, air traffic flow demands and safety needs we have in the future. The unification of the European sky will be a big achievement, maybe less visible than the single currency, but certainly not easier to get. Importantly, it will be visible proof that governments can give up some national priorities to reach common goals of economic efficiency and environmental sustainability. Travellers will benefit, and it will also be a new leap towards political unity.